Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and I want to make a special video talking about the iPhone 10 display like I told you all that I would. I had two displays to look at to draw my conclusions from. One from T-Mobile and one from the Apple Store. So let's give my conclusion at the start. This is the display that I have been most excited to see because Apple takes calibration very seriously. Now this is a Diamond Matrix Pentel OLED display manufactured by Samsung, but Apple had a say in its calibration and customization. So my thoughts, I give it my seal of approval. This is my favorite OLED display calibration wise to watch content on. It is even good enough to watch dark scene content that other AMOLED displays struggle with. So one of my favorite shows, Stranger Things, looks great. Starting with uniformity, I'm happy to see that it is very uniform. Both of my units are, so I'm optimistic that many will be. And I looked at several Apple Store units, and they all looked great as well. So I don't see a cool tone at the top and a warmer tone at the bottom, for example. The display brightness can be turned down to very dark, and it doesn't turn pink or look weirdly textured at low brightness like the V30 does. It's excellent. This is a top-notch Samsung display. The display definitely gets bright enough at a measured just under 700 nits at 100% brightness, no auto modes. That is an awesome brightness. Now in order to take advantage of the highest brightness that you can, turn off auto brightness and also the true tone. The display is 5.8 inches with a resolution of 2436 by 1125 and it's 458 pixels per inch. It also supports HDR. So this display isn't as wide as the 5.5 inch display of the iPhone 8 Plus, but it's taller instead. In actual use though, interestingly, it feels like a smaller display than the 8 Plus because of that functional area on the bottom, that notch, and also some apps are not yet fully supported, so you're only using a small portion of the screen. And also, like I mentioned, because it simply isn't as wide as the iPhone 8 Plus's display. So it feels more like a higher resolution 4.7 inch display. So I would call it more of an upgrade to the iPhone 8's screen instead. I actually like that there is no curve to the display because there's no deviation in color at the edges. This is one less distraction that you'll have to deal with unlike curved Galaxy devices. Really, this one's a matter of taste. Now as for blue shift, my first unit will shift a little bit bluish at an angle, but it's not distracting and nowhere near as bad as the Pixel 2 XL. Now my second unit shifts in the same exact manner, but instead of shifting bluish, it shifts to reddish. Now this is very distracting and I'm going to be returning it because of it. So I suppose we can expect some variation in how annoying the issue is. Moving on to calibration, what people may not know is the iPhone 7s, 8s, and 10s use sRGB by default, not the wide color display P3 mode. Apple allows developers to include wide color where it makes sense in apps to complement what you're looking at, and it's natively used in photos taken from the iPhone that you can also view in wide color in the gallery. This methodology is called color management and is very important to standardizing the way colors look across the entire OS. Right now in my Note 8, I can choose my color mode if I want something more accurate, but if I use the wider color modes, it will oversaturate everything instead of bringing a wider range of color to what is intended only. So the iPhone 10 automatically switches between sRGB and display P3 gamuts depending on the content. This is how it should be, and this is the direction that Android is moving towards with Oreo. Back to talking about being sRGB by default, iPhone 10 is closely calibrated to sRGB. The primary red, green, and blue coordinates on both units aren't spot on, but are very close. They appear ever so slightly lacking in the greens and are slightly off in the blues. Now perceptually, it doesn't stand out for the greens, but it does a tidbit for the blues. Now realize though, I would expect variations between iPhone 10s. So if DisplayMate's measurements are correct, his unit looks even better than mine do. But my iPhone 8 Plus and Note 8 are a bit better with their primary coordinates. Still with the iPhone 10, colors look very natural and accurate. The color saturations overall look very good, not too over or undersaturated. Apple targeted D65 white, and my first unit is pretty darn close to that. RGB levels are decently balanced, so white looks good. White isn't too warm or too cool. That is until you use the true tone mode. 
So with True Tone mode off, it's very close to D65 white, which is very much part of the sRGB calibration standard. Gamma is a little higher than I would like it to be at about an average of 2.3 at a brightness of 200 nits. Now gamma should target 2.2 like my iPhone 8 Plus does, but 2.3 is still more mindful than I have seen with other AMOLED displays where it will look just too contrasty. So keep in mind that higher gamma dims the look of the display and also saturates the colors. But an average of 2.2 is what you want for the sRGB calibration standard. So all of this highfalutin detailed stuff is to say that the colors look pretty accurate. Colors you look at every day ring true instead of being noticeably off, like on skin tones, for example. On things that you look at every day is where bad colors stick out most, like on skin tones or skies or grass. And the iPhone 10 looks great. But what I am most impressed with is the grayscale calibration. I have seen many AMOLED grayscale disasters with color deviations and banding that just ruins the way gradients look, especially in shadows, darker scened movies. The grayscale here on the 10 looks fantastic without a lot of deviation. So when I look at a grayscale gradient, it looks pretty smooth going from black to white. Also, I don't see any black clipping, which cuts out shadow detail to black and looks terrible. And they don't compress the shadows either. The 10 has great black response. So I can watch darker themed shows like Stranger Things and still be able to see detail in shadows. Now taking a peek at wide color, display P3 as Apple calls it, it is very close to the DCI-P3 color space and will only be used by developers in certain places in apps. It can also be seen in photos taken from the iPhone, which we can also view in wide color under the gallery and in outside content that is encoded for P3. Overall, so far I can see Apple did a great job with this display. This is one AMOLED display where I can actually watch content like I would with an LCD panel, a well-calibrated one, and not end up upset. Now, scratching all of this aside, as for that notch, if you don't like it, don't get this phone. Just don't. The thing is that I often find it necessary to zoom in to full screen to where that notch is obstructive, because otherwise I find that some content has pillar boxing and letter boxing, so you get just a very small area of the screen that's actually usable, and it makes the screen look very small. So in portrait mode, the notch is cool. In landscape mode, not so much, it becomes obstructive. I think the way that they are going to be able to deal with this is just with a bigger phone, honestly. But for what it is, two thumbs up. I am very impressed with the display of the iPhone 10. So let me know what you guys think of the iPhone 10 in general. What do you think about the display? Are you liking it? So this is my comprehensive look at the display of the iPhone 10. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you learned something. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And have a good day, you guys. Bye! And stay tuned for the full review.